Namaste. So, in the last episode, which you should definitely watch all the way through, if you haven't, you're going to really miss something, which is the deep meaning or the experiential meaning of the Nachiketa Agni, the Nachiketa fire. This is the second boon that was given by death. And in this episode, we actually reach the end of well, what I would call the setup, <laughs> where Nachiketa uh, asks death for the third boon. And then the rest of the Upanishad, I mean, the end of the first chapter and the next actually five chapters is about the third boon because it's a doozy. I mean, it's a really big one. And it leads to the most amazing and satisfying conclusion by Shankaracharya in his Tika. So we're going to do these two verses. Uh, they're easy ones, not like the last couple. Oh boy, those were tough. That was a whole detective story to get to the bottom of the meaning of those. Uh, but these are pretty straightforward. So let's go into it. Yamavrinita dvitiena varena Etamagnin tavaiva pravakshanti janasa Tritiyam varam nachiketo vrinishva O Nachiketa, this is for you the boon about the fire that leads to heaven for which you prayed through the second boon. People will speak of this fire as yours indeed. O Nachiketa, ask for the third boon. And now Shankaracharya's Tika. Nachiketa, O Nachiketa, te to you. Eshaha, this is Svargyaha Agnihi, the fire the boon about the fire that leads to heaven. Yam, which, which fire as a boon. Avrnita, you prayed for. Dvitiena varena, through the second boon. That boon about the fire is granted to you. This is only a conclusion of what was said earlier. Moreover, Janasaha, people, Pravakshyanti will speak of Etamagnim, this fire, Tava Eva, as yours, by your name indeed. This is the fourth boon that I have given out of my satisfaction. Nachiketaha, O Nachiketa, Vrnishva, ask for Tritiyamvaram, the third boon. The idea is this, unless that is given, I shall remain indebted. So this is the conclusion of the setup. In other words, everything is leading up to this third boon, and you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> and then Shankaracharya gives like a long instruction about a transition from the setup to the actual uh, subject or the topic of the Upanishad, which the rest of the Upanishad is about. So out of six chapters, you know, the first two-thirds of the first chapter is the setup, and the whole rest is simply about the third boon, because it's a real doozy. <laughs> Ye yang prete vichikitsa manushye stit ye ke naya mastiti chaike etad vidya manasishtas tvayahang varana mesha varastritiyahang. 
This doubt that arises consequent on the death of a man, some saying it exists, and others saying it does not exist. I would know this under your instruction. This is the third of all the boons. Shankaracharya's Tika. Yayang vichichiksha. Yayam vichikitsa. This doubt that arises. Prete manushye. When a man dies, a.k. Some say, astiiti, it, the self, which is distinct from the body, senses, mind, and intellect, and which gets connected with a fresh body in the next life, exists. Cha ek, and others say, I am this one, a self of this kind, na asti, does not exist. Hence, it is a thing whose knowledge can be acquired by us neither through direct perception nor through inference. And yet, the supreme human goal is dependent on a clear knowledge of it. Therefore, Tvaya Anushishtaha, being instructed by you, Aham, I, Etat Vidyam, would know this. Varanam, of all the boons, Eshaha, this one, Varaha, boon, is Tritiyaha, the third, the remaining one. So, this is the third boon that Nachiketa is asking from death. In the previous verse, Shankaracharya brought out that death would feel a debtor. He would be indebted to Nachiketa because he promised three boons. Well, he actually gave three boons already, but one of them was a fourth boon, unasked for, given spontaneously out of his joy at seeing what a great student Nachiketa is. So just see, I mean, the wonderful nobility of the character of both death and Nachiketa. That death, even though he could have cheated and said, well, this is the third boon. <laughs> he doesn't, because Nachiketa didn't ask for this. He didn't ask that the fire be named after him, nor for the variegated necklace, representing knowledge of the various effects of karma work. No, he asked for these two boons only, that his father should be happy and that he would know the fire that leads to heaven. So now he has these. And death gave an extra boon out of his own will. So there's still one boon remaining. So Nachiketa drops the bomb. <laughs> He says, I want to know whether the self exists after death or not. What is the secret, in other words, of death? Now, who better to ask this question of than death himself? And we'll see in the next verses that Nachiketa appreciates this. Meanwhile, I want to read the transition that Shankaracharya has written uh, going from the setup to now the actual topic of the Upanishad. It's very instructive. This much only, as indicated by the two boons, and not the true knowledge of the reality called the self, is attainable through the earlier mantras and brahmanas of the Vedas which are concerned with injunction and prohibition. In other words, the Upanishad exists in the context of the Vedas. The mantra section gives indications of rites that must be performed. That's why they're called injunctions. And prohibitions. You can't do this, you can't do that while performing these rites. Otherwise, they'll be ineffective. 
and the Brahmana portions give the secret mantras and also the procedures that the priests alone must perform. Now, the Upanishad section of the same Veda is giving the meaning. And here it's given in the form of a story about Nachiketa and death. Hence, for the elimination of the natural ignorance, which is the seed of mundane existence, which consists in superimposing activity, agentship, and enjoyment on the self, and which has for its contents those objects of prohibition and injunction, the subject matter of the scriptures, it is necessary to speak of the knowledge of the unity of the self and Brahman, which knowledge is opposed to this ignorance, is devoid of any tinge of superimposition on the self, of activity, agentship, and enjoyment, and has for its object absolute emancipation. Therefore, the subsequent text is begun. So, in other words, everything up to this point has been a setup, creating the context, the background, the situation in which this conversation about the identity of the self with Brahman can proceed. And death being the, the great teacher uh, because he is intimately involved in this process, is the perfect one to explicate this particular section of divine knowledge. Through the story is being elaborated the fact as to how, in the absence of knowledge of the self, which is the subject matter of the third boon, there cannot be any contentment even after getting the second boon. Since one who has desisted from the impermanent ends and means that are comprised in the aforementioned rites becomes qualified for the knowledge of the self, therefore, with a view to decrying those ends and means, Nachiketa is being tempted through the presentation of sons, etc. So, Nachiketa has been given these two boons that your father and uh, your family and all those for whom you must perform your various religious duties are happy and satisfied. They're at peace. And now you also get knowledge of the Nachiketa fire, which we discussed in the last video, is pretty much identification with universal love. But even this fire only leads to heaven, the higher heaven, the heaven of the immortals like death himself. And even though the denizens of that heaven live for the entire span of the existence of the universe, they are still temporary. They are still annihilated at the Mahapralaya, at the end of the universe, when uh, Shiva does his dance of destruction and burns up everything, uh, it all disappears. And all those beings are merged with Brahman. The ones who don't attain self-realization before that have to come out again in the next creation and go through this whole samsara again. So we really want to attain complete self-realization before the end of the universe, before the Mahapralaya, before the Shiva Tandava <laughs> that burns up everything and destroys everything. Therefore, the rest of the Upanishad will be about this very topic, which is presented in the context of the interaction between Nachiketa and death, who is the perfect teacher of enlightenment. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti, Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.